I'm always curious to see where my meals come from. That's why I came down to North Mountain Pastures in Newport, because I wanted to see how this small family farm is respecting nature while creating amazing food. So what kind of turkeys are they? These are called broad-breasted whites, so big, fat, non-reproducing breasts that you want to eat for Thanksgiving. Okay. Oh, 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 oh! It's always good to see where delicious meats are born. Or I guess, raised. Look at me! And it makes sense those turkeys are running for me. I think they know that I want to eat them. Come back, guys! Yeah. <laughs> I'm Steve Ford, and I was born and raised right here in PA. I'm lucky enough to know a lot of the hidden treasures and tasty treats sprinkled all across our state. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Yes. But I don't know them all. So I figured it was time to hop in the car and take a road trip to see what I might be missing. Organic farming is the way you're setting this up. We kind of think about it like a step further. So we're using non-GMO feed, we are not using antibiotics, but we're also, they're outside. So for organic production, they can still be in confinement, they can still be in a barn with like access to the outside, but we're outside all the time. Okay. So they're going from one pasture to the next pasture to the next pasture. Do you name all these animals? There is one with a name there's in a, there. There is a named pig, huh? Yeah, Which there's... one's Thorny? A white and black. Oh, I see the one in the one. back over there. Yeah. Thorny. Free range pigs. Yeah, so free range pork, we call it pastured pork or pastured pigs. Okay, and the idea is a better life for the animal a better tasting food. Right, to me like the whole idea of animal welfare is let the animal express its nature and their nature is root things up, hang out in the grass, hang out in the dirt and eat. And they look like they're having a good old day. What do you think one of these weighs right now? So these guys here, like these bigger ones, are just over 200 pounds. So they have another like 100 pounds to gain before they become charcuterie. Brooks and his family use all of their 84 acres to rotationally graze their animals, and fat and happy livestock turn into delicious meats, which turns into a fat and happy Steve. This is the best meat on the planet, right. obviously. Because they're um, moving around, they're active. They're, they're active, they're outside, they're doing the things that pigs do. How do I go about eating more organically? The way you're gonna find it is to go directly to the farmer, most likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many farms who are shipping stuff, local farmers markets, but I think you still have to like talk to the people. Right. The closer you are to the person who actually produces the food, the better. Well, how do I get thorn? How do I get some of thorny? <laughs> Northmountainpastures.com. <laughs> yeah. After these guys are full grown and, and processed, we get, you know, like packs of pork chops, shoulder, sausage, bacon, some grass fed lamb, some pastured turkey, and then we ship it out and it shows up on your doorstep. It's like pastured pork Amazon, basically. Okay, it's time to talk turkey. So we move yeah. them also, right? So this is their paddock right now. Uh -huh. And the way that we control where their manure is, is by moving that house. Okay. So they have free range of this whole area, but if we move that once a day to a new spot and that kind of spreads it out. So I always think of the grain that we buy in, because these guys have to eat grain and these guys have to eat grain. So it's feed to like raise the animals, but it's also, we're basically bringing nutrients onto the farm. So it's right. fertilizer. Brooks works really hard thinking about both his animals and the land they're being raised on. And the next step in his process is to turn them into delicious cured meats, like copa. So you can see kind of why people use it for curing because it has both the fat and the, the lean, mm -hmm. which is like salami, like you want to have both in there. Brooks starts making copa the same way I spend my spa days. Give him a wine bath. Yep. That's plenty. Maybe just massage it in there bit. now. Yeah, just make sure it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. You're just getting that flavor in there so that it's gonna absorb some of the flavor of the wine. The salt's actually gonna break down the cell walls and the salt's gonna pull moisture out of it. I bet Thorny would have liked this better when he was out in the field. <laughs> Thorny would have liked it well, uh, while the copa was still could, on. Could have enjoyed it. Before the wine bath, Brooks used the weight of the cut to figure out the perfect proportions of salt, paprika, and garlic powder. 
add a little Calabrian pepper, and it's time to rub it all into the meat. Smells real good. It smells really good. Yeah. Let's drop it in here. This copal will start by getting vacuum sealed and refrigerated to cure for about a week. So these guys already cured. Okay. And now we got to do some more stuff with them. So this is kidney fat. The fat that's at the kidney is kind of like the most saturated fat. So it's real thick. Also on the outside of it, you can see that right there. There's this membrane that's yeah. perfect for wrapping these guys. You're just kind of peeling as much of that fat off of there. Yes, I'm peeling kidney fat, and yes, it's weird. But I guess Brooks doesn't cut any corners when it comes to making cured meats. Man, look. Is that good? That's good, yeah. Wrapping the copa in the kidney fat membrane keeps it from drying too fast. Next, tie them up. It's like putting on some stockings. Yes. Not that I know anything about Put Putting on stockings. And now they're ready to age for months. Let's hang them. All right, here we go. So wait, what did you do in your life that got you so passionate about this? I ate really good meat and then started raising pigs. It's wild that you go from eating a slice of meat to this passion of, and wanting to do all this work. What? This is hard work. <laughs> wanting to do all the work is the thing, right? Yeah. All right, let's hang them. All right, we're going right up on this bar. You got yours? I got. Bam. All right, Brooks. You're maybe one of the hardest working oh. men I've met out here on the trail. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. All for a purpose though, right? Yes. Having a good meal. And I appreciate you having me out. Anytime, yeah. It's probably one of the more impressive things I've seen. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah. for coming. Come back and move the pig sometime. All right, thanks for having me. Sweet. That copa is going to taste amazing. And after going online and placing my order, I hit the road for Harrisburg. I have a date with a multi-generational family business. And it's time to see how the sausage gets made. Hello. Hey, Steve. Hello. How's it going, guys? What's going on? Welcome to Schmitty's. Hey. Good to see you. This is Don. Dylan. Dylan. My son, yep. Dylan. I'm third generation. He's fourth, fourth generation. Awesome yeah. to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, too. My grandfather started it. He made it in a basement, like most of the Europeans. And people come in, I got sausage from your grandpa in the late 50s. Which yeah. I wasn't around, so. Are you guys German? My mom's side was a Schmidt. Okay. My grandfather was Henry Schmidt. They're known for their sausage. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Steve, how about you come back? We show you how to make some sausage. I love that. Sound good? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Don's grandfather, Henry Schmidt, opened his first shop in Steelton in 1961. Now they have two shops, one here in Harrisburg and another in Hershey. And they're using recipes that go back to the beginning. This is Polish kielbasa. Okay. This is a hydraulic stuffer. All they do is push on the pedal, hold it, and it shoots it out. When my grandfather and my dad made it, it was cranked. So me and my brothers, this is all we do all day. All right. Oh my goodness. Like riding a bike. Watching these guys make kielbasa, it's obvious they've been doing it for a long time. From filling, to pinching, and then twisting, Practice clearly makes perfect. You don't want to do it slow and try not to break them. Just Keep do going. them as quick as you can. You break it, Even you break. if you break them, that's fine. Well, I guess it's time to grab a pig intestine and get to work. Just pushing some intestine over All the way this. on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. Don, where's this meat coming from? We get meat from Groff Meats in E-Town, and we get meat from Reisinger Poultry in York. And what kind of meat is this? It's the pork trimming this right here, 80 point. We like the local meats in Pennsylvania. Oh, oh. Slow it down. Oh, dang. The intestine is weak. That's what I say all the time. It's not my fault. Maybe I can get adopted and I can be the fifth generation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel confident. Ah. Oh, it's all right. That's cool. Just rip it off. Sorry, Dad. I like this job. 
I think I'm doing good. I'd say so. That's the best one yet. Yeah, you can oh, probably, you can, you can all the probably way. just go home. I, I think, think me and Steve got it covered. You could probably just go home. Did I go home? I mean, time. go take a break at least. Once these kibasa are cut and twisted, it's time to put them on a stick and get them ready for smoking. All right. Here we go. We'll put them right in there over the box, yeah. So how long will these sit in here? Um, about six hours, maybe. Maybe a little longer than that. They can sit so long here because it's a cold smoke. So Ooh. low temperature, a lot of smoke, you know what I mean? Cold smoke. Cold smoke, yeah. Unlike a hot smoke, which cooks the meat while it adds flavor, a cold smoke gives your meat the flavor at a lower temperature before it's fully cooked later. I'm gonna taste smoky myself. Yeah, you might. All right, you gotta get this ground up. We gotta make ours. What's ours? Ours is our, uh, our mild and our hot smoke. We just call it ours around here because that's our sauce. Hot smoke sausage. German Hungarian mild hot smoke. Don and Dylan are treating me just like family and putting me back to work. But at least I get to be part of the Schmidt family tradition. Why is this the famous sausage? This is my great grandfather's recipe brought over from the old country. Yeah. He uh, made it in his basement, then he brought it to the store. We've been making it for the past 60 years. It's, it's our sausage. Okay. Well, let's make this world famous sausage. Let's, let's do it. Salt first. Okay. Don't ask how much. I can't tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Minced garlic. Plenty of garlic. How much pepper? Enough. Some mountain pepper. This is a lot of pepper. And then Hungarian paprika. Two scoops of that. Smells good already. I gotta make sure it doesn't go out. This 60 year old family recipe is clearly a secret. So don't get any ideas about stealing it to mix up 200 pounds of meat at home. And with the pork and spices all mixed up, it was time to return to my first love, tangled pig intestines. There we go. Look at that. I'll tell you what, you picked it up quick. You did. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Now that I have the sausage making down, the only thing left to do is try one. I'm waiting for this all day. Yeah, I mean, you earned it, man. This is our mild smoke with our, our barrel cured sauerkraut. I'm excited for you to try it. I mean, you pretty much made this, so I mean. I did, yeah. I worked hard for Yeah, this. you did. How much kraut do you want? You a kraut guy? Just a little kraut. Just a little kraut. I did just I got you. taste the sausage, really. There you go. Why did you decide you wanted to stay in the family business here? I worked throughout college. As I got to do more things, I kind of really understood, like, I really like doing this. I'm not, I'm not a suit and tie guy either, yeah. Well, it's so. nice to be able to work with your dad. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool working with my dad. Are you going to have one too? You know, now that you said that, I might as well. That's nice and hot. All right, let's give this a try. That's amazing. Oh, I'm glad you like it. The blend of the paprika, the pepper, and everything is like really nice and mild. I guess it's the mild. It's yeah, it's mild. mild. <laughs> it's perfect. It's exactly what you said it was. It's very like flavor forward though. How many is Very hot. <laughs> Slow down. I think I can do a couple of these. Man, I know. I'm, I'm not one to see one, you know what I mean? I'm not somebody to see one. You gotta have two. Well, thanks for having me out, man. This awesome. is fantastic. Thanks, Steve. We'll take a couple with me. Yeah, Just pack me to. up. Got to. Whether it's salted, stuffed, or smoked, the people of PA appreciate all the effort put into their meats and they appreciate their traditions as well. The ones passed down through generations or shared throughout centuries. From party staples to tailgate favorites, Pennsylvania is a place where food brings people together. And it's a delicious story that we continue to share.